On the coast of present-day Nigeria, formed in the 11th century, there was a vast and powerful kingdom known as the Kingdom of Benin, ruled by divine kings known as Obas. Its position on the coast and by the Niger River brought bountiful wealth. Those who controlled the waterways controlled the tolls. With a formidable military, the kingdom conquered nearby territories, receiving further tributes. Word soon spread of this powerful and prosperous kingdom to other lands. Craftsmen, artisans, cloth makers, bronze sculptors and carpenters all flocked to the kingdom to make their mark. From this came the growth of a strong artistic culture within the kingdom, with guilds producing works directly for the Oba himself. There was an array of beautiful sculptures crafted from brass, ivory and iron. The sculptors acted as records of life within the kingdom, displaying its laws, lifestyle and ceremonies. Visitors were astounded by the kingdom, as beautiful as it was imposing, with its impressive walls and thoroughfares. As word of it reached faraway lands, new types of visitors were attracted from across the ocean. Indeed, Europeans maintained a sound relationship with the kingdom, primarily through trade, compounding the kingdom's wealth as they traded ivory and palm oil in exchange for guns and brass manila. The Europeans received profitable trade, and Benin received technology that helped expand their empire. However, it was not to be a peaceful relationship forever. In the late 1800s, the British became more forceful in their efforts to secure dominance and began to subdue previously free peoples in the areas surrounding the Benin Kingdom. Oba of Omamwen Ngombasi began to grow concerned as he saw his neighbors, King Jaja of Opobo and Chief Nana of Istekeri, swept up by European rule and he feared for his kingdom's independence. He began restricting trade possibilities, hindering in particular the free passage of palm kernels. The British were not happy with this. They wanted profits. They wished to control the Benin Kingdom but couldn't attack without reason. They decided to do what they had done to others. Coerce the ruler into a one-sided treaty that would give them ultimate control of the land. A determined minor diplomat named Henry Galway set out in 1892 with plans to not only obtain a signed treaty but to annex the kingdom as a British overseas territory. Galway approached the Oba with a treaty that would mean the virtual end of his independence. Although it is unlikely that he fully understood what he was being offered due to the language barrier. Naturally wary of the British, he was reluctant to sign the treaty but allowed others to sign for him. His intention was simply to placate the British and make them leave him alone. To the British, however, it was legally binding. Free trade was theirs. The Oba continued centuries-old traditions such as receiving tributes from traders. This was similar to custom duties and the British saw this as a violation of their treaty. They sent several warnings to the Oba to stop or face the threat of arms. Eventually, in 1896, Acting Consul General James Phillips decided to take matters into his own hands, claiming that the ivory in the Oba's palace would surely make up for the cost of such an expedition. Phillips put in a request to his superiors, arguing the benefits of an invasion and didn't wait for an answer. Instead, he arranged an expedition and took off. <laughs> 